The force of the impact of that plane crash in the French Alps was so strong that even the rugged container that held the voice recorder designed to withstand over 3,000 Gs was left twisted. Yet tonight, officials are saying they have managed to recover the critical information it carried. Sounds and voices from the cockpit, which could help explain why the plane flew into a remote mountainside. Tonight, it's the focus of a perilous search and recovery operation. Also today, we learn more about some of the 150 people who perished, including three Americans. We have two reports, beginning with Bill Neely at the staging area in the French Alps. Bill, what's the latest from there? Good evening, Lester. Investigators are confident they will find the cause of this crash after hearing those final sounds from the cockpit. The victims of this tragedy were from 18 countries, including the US. Their grieving relatives are beginning to arrive here in the Alps, close to a site that is a picture of horror. It's difficult and dangerous to get to the wreckage. Searchers are winched in, helicopters can't land, the debris smoldering. This is a mass grave. The plane is barely identifiable. Some windows here, a tire there, the wings and cockpit in a thousand pieces. The voices recorded in the cockpit on a damaged black box have been analyzed, but investigators say they still don't know what caused the crash. The second flight recorder's casing has been found, but not the contents. The names of many on board have emerged. Three Americans died. Two of them identified as Emily Selke, a Drexel University graduate, and her mother Yvonne from Virginia. Friends said they would always remember Emily with a smile on her face. There definitely will be a, a hole in our church community and in the, in the community at large. At the German school that lost 16 teenage students and two teachers, numb shock. Hundreds of troops and police are ready to join the search, but as we discovered, access to the remote site, miles from any road, is almost impossible. As well as the snow and ice, these mountainsides aren't stable. For searchers, for anyone, this is dangerous. This operation to first find and then recover bodies and debris won't just take days, it'll take weeks. There were moments of silence today from colleagues of the flight crew at Dusseldorf and Barcelona airports, from the leaders of France, Germany and Spain who flew over the crash site and from stunned locals. Silence interrupted only by the harrowing search of the helicopters. Bill Neely, NBC News, Seine-les-Alpes, France. This is Tom Costello. The fact that Flight 9525 crashed into a mountain at 440 miles per hour could be compelling evidence that the crew was incapacitated. Like all modern aircraft, the A320 is equipped with a ground proximity warning system. Too low terrain. That tells pilots to pull up if the plane is headed for a ground collision. Terrain ahead, pull up. But the German wings plane never attempted to avoid the mountain. Captain John Cox flew the A320 and spent more than 20 years in safety and crash investigations. It's a very loud warning and it's one that pilots take very seriously. So that also adds a little bit of additional evidence to the crew being incapacitated. French investigators are now analyzing the sounds and voices recovered from the cockpit voice recorder. But they need the flight data recorder to unravel what happened to the plane and in the cockpit, a process that could take weeks. We're not in a position to give the slightest explanation as to why this plane began to descend, unfortunately, until it slammed into the mountainside. We still don't know if the crew programmed the plane to descend from 38,000 feet. If so, why didn't they program an end to the descent? And why did the crew fail to respond to radio calls from controllers concerned about the descent? The airline says both pilots were experienced and trained by Lufthansa. The plane passed a maintenance check on Monday, and another captain who flew the same plane on Monday said it performed perfectly. Also today, clarification on a 30-minute delay that that flight took just before departure out of Barcelona. The airline says that was at the request of air traffic controllers because of congestion issues, and it was not maintenance-related. Lester? All right, Tom Costello. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here, and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.